I like the, uh, the technical part of it. I thought it was really well done. I thought that the writing, I, I like things that are sinister, that have humor, or some more clever stuff hanging with it. And that, I, for me, it wasn't that witty or clever writing for me, but I like the, um, the technical, the, you know, they did a good job with the, uh, Hello. Rita just said sinister. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wondered if anybody else caught that. Yeah, I, I, I like sinister. I like sinister, but I like it with a sense of humor. <laughs> so many memories. <laughs> I'm just curious what made him do it. I thought cinematically it was very well done, but pretty, pretty nasty, pretty one note. Um, I'm more curious about the real movie. I yeah. kind of like it. I kind of like a job. Yeah, which is, uh, right? which is coming out, I think, next summer. I well, think it's we, we don't know. I mean, that's what they say. But, it says, it says that I'm, online. I'm kind of hoping all these guys get to do, you know, cameos at least. Yeah. Would you guys like to see you guys do it? I just hope Russell Crowe isn't playing Goldar. <laughs>
And in the hallway comes the actor who plays the giant in the hotel hallway, and he's walking towards me. It was just so super, this speaking of surreal. Yeah, it's just kind of strange in the world. <laughs> I did a con recently, and uh, right next to my table I was with Henry Winkler. <laughs> he was just the most amazing guy. I mean, he never sits down. He's so kind to everyone, just really cool. And it's funny because when I, when I, we do photos. I, uh, we do it's for time, you know, with the morphers. And so he'd been hearing it all day, you know, people going to war for time. And finally, he looks at me and goes, "What are you saying?" <laughs> I said, "Oh, it's, it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers." We say it's Morphin Time. So then another guy comes up, and we're like, "Ready? One, two, three. And he looks at us. He goes, "It's Morphin Time." I'm like, <laughs> the boss just morphed. <laughs> We should probably take another question. Question up here at the top. <laughs> oh, what was it? Oh, crickets. What was it like? What was it like fighting Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> Which time? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, when he was back, yeah, it was uh, it was tough. You know, he was a tough competitor, and uh, you know, we had to go head up. And glad he came back to the good time. <laughs> I'm really hard, really. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Yes. What about over here? So, with regards to the audition process, there was an article released about a year ago talking about how you guys were cast, the original Rangers were casted as a group. How was that getting with random people just having to start your acting career with somebody you never knew before? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's part of the process in Hollywood. You uh, go to any audition not knowing any of your co-stars typically. So, I mean, with us, there's thousands of people that tried out, and I know in my case, I had eight auditions before I got whittled down to be in the original cast. Um, I think it was a little bit different for all of us, because I originally started reading for the Red Ranger, um, and then I realized I wasn't going to get that role. <laughs> so I, I begged the casting director and the producers to let me read for uh, Billy, um, which they kind of hesitated on, but I begged and begged and begged, and they let me do it. And eventually, five auditions after that, I got the role of Billy. So. Didn't, didn't Jason Harvey audition for Billy? Yeah, Jason Harvey, who played Skull, originally auditioned for the role of Billy. Yeah. So oh. they, you know, Jason Harvey's an extremely talented actor. So when we went into production as the series, they really wanted to use him because he was a yeah. good actor, and they brought him in as Skull, and he killed it. He killed it. You know, he killed it. <laughs> I think we're all excited that we got the Blue Ranger that we have up here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we, I don't think we could have thought it was uh, anyone else who could have started yeah. and played that well. You guys are too nice. <laughs> There's about 10,000 actors in Hollywood that could probably play right. well. <laughs> no.
directors because they really cast some amazing people. So we've been able to become really good friends. But we, I didn't watch my own episode, so it was like, you, it's weird watching yourself. So I didn't watch the show after, but them as people are amazing. So I think it's great. Hey, hey look, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the beard and everything. <laughs> Okay, uh, two-part question. Uh, oh, All right, sorry. Sure. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I know, right? Um, okay, so being that, you know, Power Rangers it was originally based on, you know, a Sentai show from Japan, um, what, like, challenges did you guys face as, like, actors, you know, um, when you had to play parts that might have been different from other roles? Did you guys have any challenges, funny stories? Parts different from other roles. Uh, you know, we, we actually didn't even see the Sentai until after we started filming. Um, didn't even know it existed. Yeah, we didn't know it existed. I mean, it was totally at some point point by Sublime. Yeah, the show was ran in Japan for 20 years. We were like, oh, good. you know, okay. And then when we saw it put together, then in the beginning it was half Japanese footage and half us, because obviously we didn't film that part, so we were like, oh, this is new. Um, um, and then... That's my brother. Exactly, right? <laughs> So, uh, you know, I think what we did was just built our own characters as the teenagers, and then when it came to, you know, the Suda Rangers and the Japanese fight, um, we just added our voice to it, the personalities. Yeah. It definitely was very funny. I recently watched the pilot again, and I thought, gosh, I, I really loved this edit as an eight-year-old, but it was very, really, really, <laughs> it's super funny. And, and I, uh, you, you actually, it's interesting to describe uh, that you need oh, the most overbearing, I think, humans, and they go, oh, not teenagers. <laughs> I would have picked up on that as a kid, but... <laughs> right. and, and I think I think the writers of that show did, like, a really good job. I'm up here. No. I'm sorry. You know, I think the writers did a really good job on, on the show, but just kind of go back to the first one and I probably have an answer, but um, do you ever feel like there was like a line or two, or like the story just kind of like, kind of got shoehorned? Like, it's like, this doesn't really make sense with what's going on with the plot right now. <laughs> All the time? Oh. This was a question for the writers. Every episode. I mean, there were like monsters that like, water bottle monster, and I mean, anything turned into a monster, so at some point you just let it go and you just have fun with it. Let know? me put this in perspective yeah. for you. Let's, let's stick with three meals in a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Imagine cooking one piece of each meal, but not consecutively. Like you start out at breakfast time and you break out the waffles, but then you start cooking, or then you pull out the sandwich meat for your lunch, and then you throw the hamburger patty for dinner in the pan, and then you go back and you keep jumping between those three meals all at one time. That's yeah. the way we build three episodes, two episodes, four episodes <clears throat> at a time. So we, I, I don't remember hardly ever knowing what, what single episode I was really shooting. <laughs> is, this a, is this a breakfast, lunch, or tea time? Yeah. yeah. We shot so fast that, I mean, literally, you would, like, say you were shooting the command center. You shot the command center all day long, but you're shooting, like, you know, maybe four episodes at a time. And it would take two weeks to finish the four or five episodes that we were working on. So, I mean, you'd shoot the command center on Monday, and then you'd shoot the classroom on Tuesday, and it just kind of went down. So you, I mean, it all kind of, you know, they would change clothes five times a day, so you just didn't know what was going on. You just kind of went with it. And with Rita, she had the same footage for all the episodes a lot of the time. I was like, wait, didn't we just do this one for another episode? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to say this in this episode. And I need you to throw the staff again. Don't yeah, she, and it didn't ever match the mouth because it was different words every time in the same footage, so. That's <laughs> I think that actually added to the charm of the show. You know, like, it, it was that weird kind of like Japanese dubbing. It, it doesn't match, but it's so fun to watch. <laughs> I'm so happy. Definitely, Batman. There, you've been waiting patiently. Uh, so oh, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so it might not look like it, but I'm a big fan of my more from Power Rangers. I remember actually watching the VHS tapes of Power Playback when I was little. And so I kind of wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I really wonder, and this is kind of a similar question to 
person who's heard there before me, but what was it like, kind of, to know that this, you started this thing and you didn't think it would be big, but then it kept evolving on and on, and it's just become this huge thing. Like, what's that like? For me, it's extremely humbling. I mean, uh, when I started the show over 20 years ago now, long before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Never in a million years would I have ever thought that we would have this amazing fan base that has continued to follow us all these years, and that we would get to come to conventions and meet you guys. Um, and that, and that, <laughs> and that uh, you know, that the show would have such an amazing impact on your guys' lives. I mean, we hear so many amazing stories about how the Power Rangers influenced you to become martial artists, to become scientists, to become doctors, to become teachers, whatever it is, and you know, some people come from bad homes and we were like your babysitter, you know, you came home and you watched Power Rangers and you, you developed a great sense of yourself just from watching Power Rangers, so I'm always humbled, um, and so it's been an extremely exciting journey for me for the last 20 years. Can't speak for everybody else, but I know they sort of feel the same way. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Good answer, good answer. <laughs>
Uh, if you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had this amazing show in, uh, in Los Angeles. It was probably, if I, I can speak for myself, it was our biggest rock star moment. We were, we were like blown away because we had a show at Universal Studios Amphitheater, which seats how many people? It was like 3,000, 6,000, 6,000 6, people, right? So we were supposed to do this one little show, and it turns out there were too many people. So we they moved to the amphitheater, and when it's like 6,000 people, what well, we ended up doing six shows that day. We filled the theater six times, and we backed our traffic from Universal Studios all the way downtown all day. It was like, the craziest day. It was like, and, and when they announced us, when we come out on stage in our helmets and everything, and they go, he does the power of the mass tonight. He is Zachary Taylor. So I jump off the podium, get in the middle stage, and take off the helmet, and the crowd goes, ah. <laughs> And there's lights. Everybody, it's like, everybody's taking pictures. It's like, whoa. Like, I give them like, what's here about it? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, we, we literally shut Universal Studios down that day at 10 a.m. Like, there was that many people within that, sh like, within an hour of opening, they had to shut the park down because there were so many people, and the, we, like you said, we backed up the freeway, 10 miles in each direction, so that's when we knew, like, wow, we're, this show's mean something. It's, it's this really is crazy. Yeah, we broke their attendance records. I remember I came out on this platform and I was going to do a backflip off of the crowd, and that's not really the important part. The important thing. <laughs> First show when I came out, we had the helmets on and the visor was tinted, like you guys are all familiar with. Well, I got up there and I was supposed to hit this pose, uh, you know, like this for a minute for the photos. And I thought, okay, a couple of photos. What I didn't and was not prepared for was the Star Wars moment that was coming my way. Because I got up there and through this visor, all I could see were just these explosions of light across the massive black theater. And it looked like Star Wars when it was like, Mr. Sulu, warp speed. The stars just stretch out. <laughs> that's what it was like. It was like Star wow! Wars. You know, it was nuts. Just to clarify, Sulu was on Star Trek. <laughs> It's funny how when they shoot these, it, it was a big budget movie, 
at the time. And when they shoot, they kind of test it and they kind of went back and I think people watched it and they just were like, ah, oh, we want something more. So they took it up a notch. And I really like the, the ooze guys that when they we hit them, they splat. Like I thought that was really cool. So I think it, I think it all happened for, you know, it all happened, but it, it turned out better. Yeah. Some movies, you know, footage ends up on the cutting room floor all the time and you don't ever see it again, so I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, if anything. It would be in 20th Century Fox's hands. In the original movie, Rita wins. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! It's all on the cutting room floor. <laughs> That's a lot of episodes. Yeah. That's a big Bye. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That episode. That actually is a trading card. They have a picture of that on a trading card. Just yeah. it's called free fight. That's me with. I might have some. Strung together sausages. Using That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're creative on that show, right? Yeah, we have to be creative. Let me let me set the scene for you on food fight. Um, the thing was there, I, I guess, Walter, these two, but uh, Vulcan Skull, us, Amy Jo, uh, who's probably less mischievous, I think, than Evil, but, but they gave me, a teenage boy, a bunch of food and said we were going to film a food fight. And then they tried to lay down rules and regulations about how it was going to go. <laughs> Mistake. They knew how that was going to go too, which is why the director of photography, the camera, and everybody were wrapped in saran wrap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're like, yeah, let's get directions. Okay. <laughs> Just give me the food and let's get this guy going. <laughs> we have a blast. Uh, there was a full day of going food and everybody came by. Like, I, can't I, can't believe believe I, anywhere. I can't believe I hit the director. I was hanging over there. <laughs>
I remember, I remember very clearly going into the recording studio uh, and seeing the footage of what, what was going on that day, and Alpha bouncing around the command center and, and sparks flying everywhere. And uh, it's it's on the cutting room floor somewhere, but there's a there's a section of that tape of, of Zora going, "Idiots! I'm surrounded by idiots." <laughs> series. I should let y'all know there was a special episode filmed in Japan where the original team shows up under Goldar's control and starts shredding the new team. Just oh, I like that. So, <laughs> but my question, I promised Karen yesterday that I would ask you an uncouth one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. When uh, the Power Rangers started getting popular back in the 90s, there was a ton of controversy. You know, there, there were these people coming out and saying, oh, they're going to make our kids violent, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to say, uh, if, personally, from my, from my side of the work for watching you every week, I'd probably been more violent than I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say, if did that come back to you? And when it did, you know, how, how did you feel about that? How, how did, how did you approach Well, I'd like to answer that because I had a son who was five, and he was in preschool, and I, they had a silent auction, and I had an opportunity to give them all these um, action figures to make money for the school, and they wouldn't let me. Wow. They said it's too violent to show, and I was outraged because my son you know, and all the little kids would kick the air. They were fighting the imaginary putties. They weren't hitting each other. Yeah. But to the adults, they were being a little overly cautious, and they lost a lot of money at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of funny thinking now Power Rangers of all things compared to some stuff nowadays. It's really I know. Right. Really yeah. kind of yeah. Yeah. Even back in the day, if you watched Wiley Coyote, it was his Bugs Bunny. Shot each other in space with rockets, dropped each other off of cliffs. And I'm violent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you notice eventually we stopped doing civilian fights because it was just so violent or whatever. We had to do tons and tons of PSAs and make sure that everyone knew we were only fighting monsters. <laughs> wow. You know, it was a bunch of things. They were very worried. The PSA, I think the PSA. I love them. Yeah. They were important. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it was just one of those things where we were constantly getting notes about, you know, the show, make sure they don't do any face punches, or you can't, like, there were certain rules that we couldn't do in the fights. Um, but, I mean, I, it's like you guys said, it's like, now now looking back, it, it seems pretty harmless, and we had, every episode had a life lesson, and, and, you know, I think they really spent a lot of time wanting, you know, you guys to get something more from it. And, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, you know, kids would, you know, brothers and sisters were going to fight whether they were watching Power Rangers or not, so, you know, but we, we definitely took the blame. I think it's amazing because our show created a lot of martial artists. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of you guys in the front row. Yeah, we know so I would always tell parents what they say, well, your show is violent, and we're like, listen, Put your kids in a martial arts class because they will learn self-discipline in the martial arts class. You learn not to fight. You learn to defend yourself. And you learn to fight if you have to fight. And in the process, you don't fight because you go, I can walk away from this. I'm confident I can walk away from this. But if you touch me, it's going to hurt you. <laughs> so, I know there's a whole lot of nerds walking around that are kind of dangerous. <laughs> I'm saying that I'm kind of fun. Thank you very much. Over there, Darn. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to ask you guys in the show. I know. Sure as hell wasn't for money. <laughs> you know what? The show is, uh, uh, as all of us, we're, we're all actors, and uh, 
I think one of the things that inspired me about the show is the opportunity to be a superhero, the, the opportunity yeah. to be a role model, and and to you know to show to give a message of standing up for the things that are right, you know. So that was one of the things that inspired me to be really excited about getting that role and portraying the character. Yeah. I loved it because I was, you know, there was only two girls. So for me, I mean, I really got to, you know, show a young girl, especially, you know, girls come up to me all the time and say, oh my God, you know, I got to see, and I'm sure you get it, where I got, you look like me, you know? So I, I thought it was amazing to be a superhero and then to be a girl that actually could save the world. I mean, that just didn't happen. I helped all the mothers through menopause. <laughs> to get into TVs or movies, and, and you do that to sort of like find something that might inspire or encourage somebody else, and then to find myself to be a part of a show where I get to sort of be Professor X, which is something that, for me, growing up was like, oh, I get to be a superhero, uh, the leader of the superhero team? Yes, anything, you know, to do that, and then it was just fantastic to be a part of that. I think it's just a gas to be a part of a successful show. I mean, something that was just getting bigger and bigger. It was that much more fun to be a part of it. I think what inspires me is you guys. Amen. I think we have time for a couple more questions, maybe one or two more questions. Let's go up there on the top. Yes, I'm wearing underwear. see all together, almost all of you. Um, my question is, is throughout the filming and stuff from the TV show, stuff like that, did any of you guys get to keep any memorabilia from the show? Fuzzy pink person went, ah! <laughs> and then 
we got stuck having a fight. <laughs> So, uh, for you, I guess, specifically, because I don't think anyone else from the movie was here, how were those metal suits? Oh, 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 It was about 30 pounds for the girls and about 40 for the guys. And then Amy Jo and I put them on and we looked like little boys and we looked like football players because it, it just made you bulky. So that somebody had a bright idea to put a corset in the back of that as well. So not only was it 30 pounds, but we were corseted and you had to have someone help you. We couldn't wear them longer than 15 minutes. Immediately they would take them off you, put a fan on you, and like literally you were just drenched. But after the movie, we all went back to the TV show, and wardrobe was like, dang, you guys look good. All y'all look good. We lost so much weight in those suits. So it was like, they were like buying us new clothes. But you know, they were horrible. They looked amazing, but it was suffer for the look. I got a lot of free massages because of those. Well, uh, I know all of us are grateful to you, too, for putting up with those. Thank so. you. Thank you. Awesome. Absolutely. A lot of people have been giving me a hard time over the hair and the beard. I have an Andy Fountain that I just launched at an Indiegogo program going on this Thursday. I'll be doing entertainment tonight uh, out in LA to talk about a new movie called Survival's End, which is why I look like the hairy mammoth right now. Leave it! Beards on the epic beard, that's the hashtag. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, if Cat, where are you? Cat back there, or Susan, uh, we're selling some. Raffle tickets, ten dollars, which will get you this mug. We'll pick it before I leave tonight, and the funds from that will go to help finance the film. So that's that's Yay, right. Yeah, yeah, give it you can. I want to see that movie. It's a most yeah. apocalyptic in the world sort of film. Awesome. I started a new web series called Uncensored Talk. I don't know if you've seen it. You can go watch it on YouTube. I've got cards I can give to you. But I had the pleasure of interviewing these gentlemen. It's still the highest rated episode that we've done. I've talked to all everybody on the stage. Uh, you guys, and so it's, it's just something I was going from con to con and meeting all these amazing people, and I was like, why are we not talking to them? So we kind of go, you know, different cities, we'll set up shop and we'll actually, you know, you know, interview people. So it's been great, and we're doing a lot of these, so definitely, if you're, you know, we're just sitting here, you, come see us. And we're going back to our tables, so if we haven't met, meet, met you yet, please come and see us. We'd love to meet all of you and, you know, get to know you better. I've been doing a lot of voiceover work uh, lately. I've uh, just finished working on, uh, well, a few movies that are coming out. Uh, uh, Insurgent. Woohoo! Uh, I've worked on that. Doing uh, voiceover work. Just worked on a movie called Scouts vs. Zombies. It's kind of like a current day uh, Goonies. <laughs> and uh, also, I worked on uh, Liam Neeson's film that just came out, uh, Running Out of Time. So, I've been working on stuff like that. Awesome. I'm just like some interactive games, and I can't say what they are because you have to sign in on disclosures. Not tell it. <laughs> I'm directing a, a show called yeah. California Highway One Destination Route uh, 10 uh, Towns, uh, Central Coast of California. Say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a title, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you can see it on YouTube. There'll be. Uh, Four episodes, around 20, 25 minutes each. It's about tourism, and it's hosted, and uh, it's been a brutal run and done for three and a half months. We put out 90 minutes of film and posted and edited in three and a half months. So that's what I'm coming off of. Wow. 
Right, well, I'm about to cut these, cut these guys loose. And if anybody wants to do a raffle ticket, I'm going to draw right now. Wait, 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 wait. All right, so I'll let these, these guys go. All right, so. Uh, cool, man. Oh, I thought you were pulling the thing out. All right, everybody, well, we want to give you an awesome round of applause. All right, let's give it a hand for